I'm Roll SK from Bitter Old Goons Gaming. Welcome to our second video in our series, So You Bought an Arcade. In this episode, we're going to partially disassemble the arcade cabinet and give it a thorough cleaning inside and out. While we're doing that, we're going to go over the wiring in the cabinet, make sure it's properly connected, and then we're going to make try to turn it on and see if the thing actually uh, fires up and works properly. While we're going through it, we're going to make sure we check for any broken or damaged components and make a list of anything that we might need. So stick around and we'll get this thing all cleaned up. arcade cabinet used, it may have spent a good portion of its last several years shoved away in a basement or a garage somewhere collecting dust. So it's always a good idea to give your cabinet a thorough cleaning inside and out to bring it up to as good condition as you can possibly get it. Now to do that you're going to need a few uh, basic items such as a vacuum cleaner with a dusting attachment, a basic tool set, some very dilute uh, cleaner, I'm just using dilute soap and water in a spray bottle. A set of clean rags to wipe up any moisture that might get on it. And uh, a not so secret secret, but um, these Mr. Clean uh, Magic Erasers are really good for getting off any sort of paint or stains that are on the cabinet. Some contact cleaner in case we need to uh, clean and um, restore any of the connections. And most importantly, the manual for your arcade. Now, new or old, odds are if you don't have a copy of yours, you can find it online. And specifically what we're looking for here are the schematics in the back that show how the arcade cabinet is supposed to be configured and wired up. Also included in our media manual is probably set up and configuration uh, instructions that you're going to need to make the screen and everything else work perfectly for you. And uh, one thing I highly recommend you do uh, before you uh, start cleaning any of this is uh, take photographs inside and out of all the conditions. So we're going to do that now. Now specifically the photographs can be used to uh, make sure you know where all the connections go. In our case we do have the connections and the layout in the manual, but it doesn't hurt to get some shots of before and after in any case. And we're specifically taking photographs of the wiring connections. And you're also going to want to take a photograph of anything you plan on disconnecting. In our case, we're going to start with taking the old PC out because it's going to need some service and cleaning. So that's the only thing we're going to disconnect aside from any power cables that might be in the way. Okay, that should do it. Well, uh, before I start unscrewing things, I'm going to get the vacuum cleaner out and just sort of clean around the inside, get as much filth and dust out of it as I can, and uh, make sure when you do that, do a thorough inspection of the bottom before you start vacuuming. You want to make sure any missing screws or bolts that have fallen down there you're picking up. In our case, we found, uh, we found a few tools down there, so without much more ado, we're going to get to it. We've uh, finished vacuuming out the bottom half and the back half of the arcade cabinet. We've disconnected the wires from the PC and it's uh, ready to pull out. Before I mention the importance of checking the bottom of the cabinet for tools, and we found uh, a couple of very important tools, including the operator card and the locking Torx bit that's required to disassemble most of this stuff. So without uh, much more ado, we're gonna pull that PC out of there and then start cleaning that thing. Now in our case, the bracket that holds the PC in place, is, it just sort of sprung in there, it's got the brackets. So it's not very difficult to remove. We'll set this aside and give it a wipe down later. Same with the styrofoam, we want to keep all that.
and we want to vacuum it up. So, there you have it. An Intel Pentium 4 hot rod of a PC. Give me a moment and uh, we'll open this baby up and see what it's going to need. Ah, the Intel Pentium 4. If ever there was a powerhouse of single core processors, this was certainly it. Top end from back in uh, early 2000s. We've uh, gone ahead and uh, given us a quick uh, vacuum on the outside to clean some of that up. We have ourselves a damp magic eraser and a dry clean cloth. We're going to start by just giving a quick wipe on the outside to clean it up. Get the last little bit of dust off there. And we're going to pull the front off as well and end up washing that off completely because it is a it is a disaster. <clears throat> but the sides are relatively easy to, to wipe down. And make sure when you're doing this that uh, your magic eraser or whatever you're using is not too, so damp that you're going to get moisture inside the case. Also, uh, would not recommend spraying the outside of the case just in case it gets in the vent. But again, just a quick wipe is all you need. There, good as new. Okay, the next step is going to be opening up the case and dealing with the inevitable mess of dust that's going to be in there. Should note I've uh, put a towel down so I don't damage or scratch my countertop, plus it'll help us keep any parts. Uh, I'm going to remove the dongle. This is the Madden copyright protection of the day. Hasp dongle. We'll set that aside. And just like any PC you've ever dealt with, pull it apart. Now this game had some power cycling issues with the PC. We were able to go to calibration and do some setting changes in there, but uh, whenever we went to launch the game, the PC would hard reset, which indicates to me that it's likely the power supply has died. And since this was manufactured in 2005, that's not surprising. Oh, that is disgusting. Okay, we're going to get the other one off, then we're going to get the vacuum cleaner, vacuum cleaner out and get this stuff cleaned. Oh, that is, that is repulsive. Good God. Okay, one second, folks. Yeah, we're just going to take that outside and blow it out first. Ooh, that is nasty. Well, we've blown it out as best we can. We vacuumed, vacuumed it out as, as best we can as well, but that's not going to be quite good enough for this. So we're going to actually go ahead and disassemble it further so that we can do some real good cleaning in there. And I'm going to just start with a CD-ROM drive. If you're familiar with PCs, this should be uh, not a strange task for you. We've all taken our PCs apart to clean them now and then. On further inspection, it looks like they have glued the IDE cable into the CD-ROM, so we're not going to be able to pop that puppy out. 
Hard drive, I don't think I need to touch. Um, I'm going to remove the front and back fan, get those real cleaned up. Pop these back in here before I forget. broke clean off. Disgusting. Okay, we're going to pop out the front one as well. I don't want to remove all the factory zip ties that are left in there, so we're just going to vacuum these off once we get them out. Now I'm going to get my uh, vacuum cleaner and uh, de-louse these as best as I can. Ooh. Make sure you uh, take note as to which direction the airflow is going. So this was that way, which means it was blowing air into the case, which means this one should blow the air out of the case. Anyway, let's get the vacuum and clean some of this up. Good stuff, let's pop the fans back in. We'll take it outside and give it uh, one last blow through with the uh, air compressed air. And what we want to specifically do is uh, make sure we blow out that heat sink on the graphic card down there one last time. We have our PC clean now and uh, we have to replace the power supply so while we're waiting for that, we're gonna go ahead and start cleaning the exterior of the cabinet. We're gonna start uh, from the back and uh, we're gonna go ahead and do the sides and then we'll spin it around and we'll start doing some work on the front including disassembling the marquee. So this thing is quite tall, so you're going to like to need a chair. Uh, make sure you do it safely. Make sure you're not uh, standing on an unsteady stool or something like that. But a uh, small chair should do the trick. And uh, we're going to start by removing the panels on the back so that we can do a good thorough job cleaning it. And this, by the way, is where you're going to make sure you have the uh, special locking Torx bits, and what makes them special is a small hole drilled in. You're going to need those to uh, remove some of the components. There we go. We'll clean that separately with soap and water. Make sure you keep all the screws in one spot. Keep these separate especially because we're going to remove and clean that fan. They go all the way through. And uh, always make sure your arcade cabinet is unplugged and discharged before reaching in the back. Be careful of any live components. Be careful of the last screw because the fan's going to want to drop. Okay, we're just going to let that hang there. Get these set aside. We're going to clean the grill with the rest of the stuff. And we're going to get the vacuum cleaner and clean up the inside there. While we uh, have this opened up and we have the chair handy, we're also going to clean up on the inside. 
we've cleaned up our grills and our screws and uh, we've cleaned up the fan down there as you can see and uh, now we're going to work on the back of the cabinet using uh, a couple of uh, Mr. Clean Magic Pass. Any sort of stain that you see you can just go out with a small circular motion. If it's a paint chip you can take it off with your fingernail and uh, when using these you want to have them damp but not so damp that they're going to drip. And you follow up with a wipe with a dry rag. So we've already done most of the back and we vacuumed out the inside here. There's not much we can do back here. Uh, we are going to clean the marquee. The front is plexiglass and that's something to note that you don't want to use these magic pads on anything that's um, plastic and glossy. It will scuff that, but it's just fine on this finish. Also fine for cleaning the T-track, or T-bolting rather. And again, if there's paint, you can just sort of scrape that off with your fingernail. And these things will take paint off the um, vinyl siding as well. And if you can, uh, well, I'll show you later, there's some paint on here that will take off with this. But it's really simple, you just sort of give it a gentle rub and eventually it just comes right off. But you have to be careful not to go too hard or you will scratch that surface. But let's finish what we're here to do and let's clean the top of this thing. So you can see how much of an improvement it is just using this. And there's no soap, just water. And again, you want to be careful not to leave any standing moisture because that will damage the wood bark board. And while we're up here, we might as well give this a quick wipe and follow up again with a clean rag. It'll come up quite nice. Really, that's all there is to it. Continue to clean the cabinet top to bottom. Uh, work from the top the way down. Back, both sides. And uh, next, we'll spin it around and I'll show you how to open up the controls. And we'll clean in there and start taking apart the marquee and checking for burnt out lights and other things like that. We've got a fan cleaned up, the grill cleaned up, the handle put back on. I've got the uh, Louvers cleaned up and that's the last piece we got to put back on the back. The back's all cleaned up, the sides are good to go. So when we've got this back on, we'll spin it around, we'll open up the controls and start cleaning up the marquee, the uh, screen and all the rest on the front bits. There you have it. Make sure when you put the screws back in, uh, you don't over tighten, you will damage the MDF. So let's get her spun around and we'll start taking apart and cleaning the front. Now that we've got the back all uh, cleaned up and uh, we've got the sides cleaned up as well, we're going to start focusing on the front of the machine. Now one thing I want to mention is we did have to do a repair on the PC that powers this unit. We had to replace the power supply and a special thanks to Johnny Rockets for donating that to the cause. Thank you buddy, appreciate that. And for the front we're basically going to do the same thing we did for the back. We're going to start from the top and work our way down. Uh, right off the bat, the turn on the plate board is not lighting up. And uh, it turns out the fault is the burned out CCFL ballast and inverter. Uh, I also tested these on a different inverter and found out they were different colors. One was red, one was white. This turn in play should originally have blue CCFL bolts behind it. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade that with an RGB LED so we can make it any color. I've got a spare one of those around. Then we're going to take off this part right here. Uh, I should also uh, mention I had to replace the light and the starter for this fixture and I just cleaned this up with the vacuum cleaner again, dusted things off best I could. And that's pretty much good to go now, now that it's back lit up. This we're going to disassemble and clean. I'll be taking this plastic off and cleaning that with a cloth and I'll try to touch up as best I can the marquee behind it. I'll also be removing these speaker grills and washing them. And once that's all done, we'll set that aside. Next, we're going to uh, remove this plate here, which will give us access to remove the glass. Once the glass is out, we're going to clean that, clean the monitor as well, and then clean the bezel. We're going to use our special magic erasers to clean the top of this board as well. And there's a few repairs we're going to have to do on this as well. For example, that's going to have to get glued back on. 
And this joystick is slightly bent, so we're going to reaction and remove the uh, metal center of this joystick and bend it back into place and then replace it. And then, of course, we're going to vacuum out the, uh, the, the inside of this as well. And continue our cleaning efforts all the way to the bottom. And eventually, we're going to replace both of those locks as well. And we'll clean up and lubricate the coin mechanism. Once the locks are replaced, everything's cleaned up, the screen is cleaned up. We will uh, then calibrate the screen again and give it a test play. So I'm going to get to cleaning that marquee, and uh, when I come back, I'll uh, show you the uh, finished LED installation up here. And again, it's just a couple double-sided uh, or single-sided tape LED strips we're going to put up there. The power for it is already 12 volt, which is just fine for my controller, and I'll put that up there as well with double-sided tape. I'm going to mention also I'm going to remove this as well and clean that up. Uh, so this plexiglass will come off, we'll clean that up, and move this soap and water away behind it. So when you come back, we'll uh, take a look at how the cleaning turned out, and uh, we'll get into some calibration settings. We fabricated an RGB LED set of strips that matches the old uh, CCFL uh, tubes that were in the top marquee, simply because it's a better product, more readily available, and cheaper. And uh, it turns out that the power source is 12 volts, just as the supply is for this RGB LED controller. And uh, we just, we're going to go ahead and reuse the Velcro strip that's in there to place the box. But uh, before we do that, I should mention, I've, I've gone ahead and I've uh, reinstalled all the zip ties that were in there for the factory to hold the stuff. So if you're reassembling yours, make sure you replace all those zip ties. Um, and even though this isn't a rectangular shape of the old CCFL tubes, we can still use zip ties to sort of secure it in place. So I'm going to start, uh, I'm also going to mention I've already thoroughly cleaned out the inside of any dust and stuff like that with a damp rag and a little bit of cleaner so that this double-sided tape on the LED strips will stick properly. And I'm just going to start on the far side and work my way back to the plug in. And I'm just using the old uh, position of the old CFLs as a guide. Oops, just stick that in place using a double sided tape that I can move back. Okay, perfect. And we're simply going to repeat that process for the other one. Side tape off first. So is the hardest part. The same deal as the last one. We're going to put in the same position as the old tubes that were in here. Okay. Next, we're going to uh, plug her in and test it. Okay. We've confirmed the marquee LED lights work. They work pretty well. Everything fits pretty nicely. We put it back together. So now the next step will be to disassemble the front and start cleaning some of that. I'm going to shut it off first. So I'm going to watch the Careful around the LEDs are pretty delicate. You want to use a lot of pressure. A lot of the stains under here will come right off. Okay, that looks pretty clean. We'll go get that cleaned up and we'll put it back together. And then we'll start taking off the screen and cleaning that up. We have our marquee all restored. We have our RGB LED lighting installed and that whole top part all cleaned up. The next step is going to be to Take off the glass above the screen and clean that and the screen and bezel around it. In order to do that, we're going to need to uh, get access to that and we have to flip up the control board. However, we want to control this, we, or sorry, we want to clean this as well, so it's all sort of part and parcel to the same thing. Uh, I've loosened off all the bolts that need to come off for this, and in this arcade, case there's four. Uh, most control boards are locked in place by some sort of clamp system that could be accessed from the coin knob mechanism. Check forms or your manual to find yours. But after the bolts are out and the thing is unlocked, you should be able to flip it right up. And we want to flip that up two reasons. Number one, we want to check all the wiring, and in my case I've done that and everything's fine. Number two, we want to clean up in here and I'm going to vacuum that out shortly. But also, we need to pull this panel off to get access to the glass, and to do that we need to have this up. 
So this is now up, and while we're in here, this is a good time to inspect all your buttons. These uh, are HAP style micro switch buttons and optical 64-way uh, joysticks. Uh, there is some repair that's required. This particular joystick needs to come out and we need to replace or bend back that particular piece of metal. But uh, let's get that all vacuumed out and then we'll take this panel off. Okay, job done. Um, as mentioned before, make sure all the wiring is in place according to the manual. And uh, quite often there's these little grommets to uh, hold the uh, thing in place. Hold, sorry, hold the wiring in place. So restring all your wiring and things like that to uh, make sure it's all run smoothly and uh, properly where it should be. One thing to note is this control board is actually removable and yours might be as well if it's a four player or something similar. And there are four bolts that uh, can be removed to take this control board off, which is required in this particular case to get the thing out the door. So, in any case, now that we have this open, we can uh, take this panel off, which will give us access to... Let's make sure it's at the way here. There we go. Anyway, we need to take this panel off, which should allow us to remove this glass and then be able to clean the screen. There we go. Now this is glass, so be very careful. The edges on this are not particularly sharp, but you still need to be careful. And we're gonna remove this whole thing and set it aside. And we're gonna clean that with your standard Windex and soap and water. Now that we're in here, we're gonna give this a quick vacuum. Okay, that's pretty clean. We're gonna get this thing turned around and uh, we'll show you how to clean it further. We've removed the bezel and vacuumed the screen. There's really not a lot left to do except uh, give it a wipe with a damp rag and a mild cleaner, uh, Windex if you like. But we're gonna clean the bezel and the screen and clean it with a dry uh, cotton cloth to finish off with. And then we'll put the bezel back on. You'll note that I'm wiping underneath the bezel. Uh, this, this particular bezel um, over, or plastic cover, whatever you wanna call it, is uh, glued in place, so I can't remove it, but I can get a rag underneath and dust it as best I can. And just check for streaks. Let's see if we're pretty much streak free. Give the last of the outside a rub. Okay, and then while we're in here, we'll clean out the card slot. as best we can for now. I'll probably have to get in there with a Q-tip and get the hard to reach places. With the stuff that's covered with the bezel, we can clean now. I'm just gonna flip this up quick. And get some of the under Great, let's put the glass back in. Okay, we have our glass bezel. Try not to break it when you install it. But it should just fit on The existing web. There we go. That so seems to be in place, and now we'll get the uh, bracket that holds that down and put it in. Which is this, and it just has a rubber uh, piece on the back to hold it in place. Leave that white, make sure it's dry. There we go. Then lift the control board up a little bit. And replace the screws. Now before we tighten those down, I have a real treat for you folks. Check that out. Original plastic covering. How rare is that to have a used 12-year-old uh, arcade that still has the 
protective plastic covering. Great way to keep things clean. And again, don't over tighten these because they set into wood and uh, you don't want to strip that. Great, well there you have it. Let's plug it in and see how it looks with the uh, screen um, all cleaned up. As you can see, the uh, LED RGB is all lit up well. It looks great. Now this thing's an old uh, single core Pentium 4, so it'll take a while to boot up. Runs on a Windows 10 operating system. But uh, here we are. We're restored all the way down to this level. The next step is going to be removing this joystick, bending it back. Uh, we're probably going to go through the effort of removing each button one by one, cleaning underneath, cleaning each button, putting it back in. And this whole cover will be clean next with the uh, Mr. Eraser Magic Bat. And then we'll work our way to this part here. And then the rest of it, including the coin off mechanism, which will require some disassembly and some washing. But uh, so we're brand new arcade cabinet, basically to this level. Well, there she is. Darn good. Okay, next step will be the uh, some partial disassembly and the cleaning of this. So I'll give me a moment and we'll get right to that. Well, I've actually already gone ahead and cleaned the control overlay. Uh, I did record it, unfortunately, I had a few video problems, so I'm just going to go over what I did to do that. Uh, number one, as mentioned earlier, you know, you, you vacuum this out, making sure you check for any missing parts or any broken parts. Make sure it's connected as per the manual states and give it a good thorough inspection and uh, clean up as best you can. There is an adjustment on the hinge that the swings on much like a car hood. It allows it to fit tight. Make sure you adjust that as well. And then to clean this again, you just take a magic eraser and uh, you know, slightly dampen it and wipe it clean. You can remove the buttons as well. These are hasp cell buttons means they're relatively easy to remove. And you then go ahead and clean the grunge underneath each button and clean these up as well. If you like, you can also go ahead and disassemble these. They're relatively easy to do. And then you clean the inside. Make sure you don't get the spring wet. And then just replace. Uh, in terms of how uh, the wiring is laid out, in this particular cabinet case, each wire loom is labeled. If yours is not, Take photographs and pre-label the wires before you disconnect the buttons. And then I also recommend you just work on one set of controls at a time. So, you know, start, you know, as I did, I started at player four and I just worked my way to player one. So that's that. We can go ahead and reinstall the bolts. Oh, actually, before we do that, One thing I didn't mention and uh, we should do before we seal that down, uh, there's a light underneath that. We're going to go ahead and take the plexiglass off that light and uh, give that a clean as well. Okay, there we have it. So I'm going to just vacuum that off and then wipe the outside. I made sure I had enough length in the wire to do that. Okay, now we're going to get some a damp cloth and we're going to clean the outside of that. Okay, and let's reinstall. And this is where uh, we didn't want to bolt that down. So I'm going to have to pull the wires back through. Okay. Actually, before I do that, let's see if we give that a little quick wipe as well. Now, be careful not to over tighten these because it will damage the vinyl overlay. Just snug is good enough. Great. Now the control panel is done and uh, we're going to move on to cleaning up the base of the cabinet and the coin mechanism. We're down to the last bit of the cabinet. We've uh, cleaned the sides. We just have to clean the front now. And uh, we're going to start by removing that grill. One thing I want to mention, 
I've replaced these locks. You can usually get the locks from any uh, locksmith you might have in town. They come in uh, sizes 5 8, 7 8, uh, an inch and an eighth, and, and various sizes. If you want to replace yours, it's a good idea to bring your old locks down. And it's not uncommon for used cabinets you pick up for them to not have the keys. I didn't have the keys for this one. So they've been replaced. But uh, <clears throat> before we get into the coin mechanism, which we will clean up as well, let's get this grill off. And we're going to soak the grill in hot soapy water for a couple of minutes and then use a brush to clean it off before we replace it. But we want to clean underneath it because you can see a little bit of gr dust and grime through the grill. And if we're going to put this thing up for sale, we want it to look perfect. And hopefully there's no other screws holding that in. It should slide down. But it appears there might be. Okay, we're going to have to pop those out first. Not a big deal. <coughs> Make sure to hold on to the uh, screws. Okay, there we go. We're going to put that off to the side. I don't want to put too much strain on the wire. So. We'll set it on that for This is, by the way, the speaker grill for the subwoofer that's behind here. And it is worth taking off to clean because uh, detail is sort of key, especially on a refurbishment. To get the thing looking new, you have to clean all the parts like new. So it's a little bit extra work, but it's worth the effort. Okay, last one. And as you can see, there's lots of grime on that. And I'm just gonna... Screw those in finger tight. It's just to hold that in place while we do the rest of the cleaning. So as mentioned, I'm gonna soak that in a little bit of soapy hot water for a minute or two. Then I'm gonna use a brush to brush it all off. Then I'm gonna blow it and then wipe it dry. And while that's uh, soaking, we're gonna just suck that off of the vacuum. Now the rest of the process is pretty similar to how we clean the rest of the arcade cabinet. We have ourselves a clean, damp magic eraser. And we're just gonna gently wipe off all the dust and any stains that are on it. Using the corners to work into the edges. And following that with a dry, clean cloth. Now we have some marks on here that look like paint. Looks like black paint. Very unlikely we're gonna be able to work that off. This is mostly useful for things like food stains, like you see there's some markings down here. We'll clean those right off. Take off any old residue from boot prints or drinks people spilled. You can see how much crap's getting off there. How much gunk. So that paint's coming off. This is fingernail. You know, the more you know. Well, fingernail's safe, but I wouldn't recommend you do that with anything sharper. But uh, this side started to look pretty good. There we go. Okay, let's move to the other side of the wood. And then we'll do the coin there. There's not much you can do about scratches. Uh, you can use some bit of touch-up paint. But the risk of touch-up paint is it's not going to match the original coating and it will maybe stand out more than a scratch. So unless the damage is severe, I typically don't bother with painting. And if I do paint, it's going to be sort of the whole cabinet. Well, we've reinstalled the grill and we've cleaned the wood off. Now we're going to move on to the coin operator mecha mechanism. Uh, much like the rest of the cabinet, we're going to proceed with a slightly damp magic eraser and just gently clean around. One thing I uh, am going to mention is that uh, <clears throat> it's quite often the cabinet, if you buy one used, you're not going to have locks. You can get these locks at any locksmith, generally. 
For about 10 bucks each, it's a good idea to bring the original lock down so you get the right size. They come in many different lengths because they can fit into different depths. But just like before, we clean around. And uh, we've also brought some Q-tips to get into hard reached places. I'm just gonna use a little bit of light cleaner to get into areas like this. Just work it into the small gaps and give it a wipe after. Great. So that's looking pretty good. So we'll move on to the inside. I'm going to point something out here. Uh, this coin op mechanism is removable. And what you're going to want to do is open those up, blow them out with compressed air, uh, give them a good cleaning. And same with in here, we're going to want to just wipe that down, clean as best we can with a Q tip, clean out the return track. and make it like new. And then that'll just lock down on there like that. Let's seal it up. And same with the bottom one. And much like the front, we're gonna go ahead and clean around all the edges of the Q-tip. Try and get the corners out and make it look like new. And if you can tell, I've already sort of cleaned up some of the inside of here because I had to replace the light. Yeah, but uh, I do need to do a little bit of work on the inside of here. And the intention here is when you open it up, you want it to look brand new. Which means getting the dust and grime out of all the corners. Now I can move on to the bottom one. A few more scuffs to take off there. Okay, let's open up the bottom one and clean the inside of that. These are scratches. We. Uh, only option there is to more or less fill them if we had some black filler paint. But again, the problem with repainting uh, is that it's difficult to paint match. So just like the top one, we're wiping the inside edges, cleaning off any gunk, and if you have a sharp tool, you can uh, use that to kind of scrape in there if you need to. And I should mention, we've already cleaned this and vacuumed out that in there. So that's all good to go. Fully refurbished. Well, here you have it. 100% cleaned inside and out. Refurbished, everything repaired, lights repaired, joystick repaired, tested. One more last thing to do. So I have some replacement uh, micro switches if we need be. They're relatively inexpensive, you can get them for a couple bucks if you order them in bulk. And they're exactly for this situation. So we'll go and do the clasp on the inside. It might just be a wire issue, we'll do those in wiggle. Seems to have fixed that problem. Same deal here, just a little loose connection. Yeah, you know what, I don't trust that. So we're gonna swap that one out. Just as easy as undoing the quick connects and putting them on the new switch. Much better. Okay, good there. Screen switch is dead, we're going to repeat that process. Move the old dead switch. Replace the new switch. And we'll pop the quick connectors back on. Okay, we have one more here that's dead. Nothing. Okay. 
So again, we'll swap it out. These are a wear item, they will eventually wear out. So this is not a new. Here you go. So three micro switches replaced, everything now seems to be working fine. We'll button that back up and ready to play or sell or do whatever you like. Basically, uh, there's nothing to this. You just need to take a lot of time, start from the top, work your way through the machine, replace any damage or broken parts, and do your best to clean it with what materials you have. And you can take an old dusty cabinet and make it look brand new and those If you're interested in more involved restorations, make sure you check out our Burger Time Cabinet series. So we take an old 1980s Valley Burger Time Cabinet and we store it using uh, new parts and uh, a raspberry pi. It works perfectly. I'm all escaped from the old news game. Have a great day.